Okay, we're back in here now, so we're going to change directories to the opt directory. Got a bunch of stuff on my desk here, and I can't get to the keyboard very well. Not that I'm the greatest typer anyway, but as you can tell. Uh, let's take a look at the directory there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get into the HP Link 3 directory. And it is cap sensitive or case sensitive. All right, we'll do a ls and look at it. Okay, so the first thing you see is we have the HP Link sample configuration. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that, but we're going to call it hplink.config. So we'll copy the cp command hplink dash sample. And remember, it's case sensitive. And we're going to rename it. Uh, we're going to make the new copy hplink.cfg. All right, now we're going to read that file. So we'll use nano. That's how you read a file or show the text of it. hplink.cfg. And here's your main configuration. So we're going to scroll down here. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to add to this comma file dash timed. Um, Steve pointed that out to me. I've, I've gotten a lot of help from Steve and JJ over at uh, the DB Switch website at uh, groups.io DB Switch. We're going to leave it on the debug level so that we can see everything that's going on for the time being. Um, right now it'll dump the log file into the temp hblink.log file. Let's scroll down here. Now we're not using the open bridge so I'm gonna make that false. Now here is where it gets interesting. Okay your master is what your hotspots and MMDVM repeaters connect to. So it's enabled true. We can leave that port at 54,000. All right. Now on the master, I made mine the same as um, Brandmeister. So P A S S W 0 R D. We're going to leave our uh, ACLs to deny one on those and allow both talk groups. And I am sorry, we are not going to leave that at 54,000. That is the port for, let me go look at my other one. If you look at my working configuration here, I'm using port 62030, and the reason I did that is hotspots have a really tough firewall, and they have a script that runs when it boots up to set the firewall rules. So instead of having to go in there and edit all of that, I found that 62030 was open, because, you know, Brandmeister wants uh, 62031. Well, they also had 62030 open. So what I did is for the master... I set it to 62030. That way hotspot users can go in and set their hotspot to point at this server and choose port 62030 and they don't have to make any changes to their firewall rules. So that's the reason I did that. So we're going to go back to a server we're working on right now. We're going to change that to 62030 and password with a zero. Let's just scroll down here. So that has our master server that is what all of your hotspots and mmdvm repeaters connect to uh, and we have both time slots allowed so we're going to scroll down here 
Okay, so now we're at the repeater section. Now, repeater is the part of the bridge that's going to connect to Brand Meister. So it's already set right with peer and all that good stuff. So now what we have to do, your IP address, if you're running it on a single server with a single IP, you don't have to put an IP address in there. But we need to set the port for Brandmeister. So we'll go back over here and look at the working configuration. And we scroll down here to repeater 1. You can see that that first port, I just left it at 54001. I'm going to set the master IP for 6494.238.196 with a 62.031. That 64 IP address, I can't remember which server it is. I just picked one. But if you go to uh, Brandmeister and look, uh, or look, uh, just do a Google search for uh, Brandmeister servers, it'll give you the IP address of all the servers. Oh, yeah, my cursor was in the wrong place. Yeah, you can't move the cursor around with a mouse here. So I'm going to paste that there. Let me go back and make sure on my port. I'm bad about getting those numbers backwards. I'll do 62301 uh, or something like that. 62031. And down here you would put in your call sign and all that good stuff. That's all the little propaganda stuff that populates at Brandmeister uh, when somebody looks at your uh, hotspot or whatever. Now the other thing is we need to scroll down here to slots. I thought that was just part of the propaganda, you know, with all the stuff here with your call sign and all that good stuff. Turns out that is very important. Um, Steve showed me that slots one means it operates on slot one. Slots two means it uh, operates on slot two. Slots three will operate slots one and two. And four was some odd setting or whatever, but it's not going to, we don't need it here. So we're going to set this to slots three because we want to be able to use both time slots because you'll have a repeater connected to it. So we've got all that set in there. That's the only thing we have to go set. Uh, everything's set to permit all on the talk groups, on the time slots, I mean. So we're just going to leave all that like it is. Oh, and we do need to put, you need to put your call sign in and radio ID. I forgot about that. So let's go back there. You need to go up here to put your call sign in. And then on radio ID, you can use one of your DMR IDs and then add a two-digit number on the end of it uh, for a special identifier, or SSID. So 3113722, and I'm going to make this one just 08, just temporarily. So it will log into Brandmeister with my call sign, and it will show up as my hotspot. That's 3113722208. So we're going to control X to exit. Yes, we want to save it. We're going to commit the changes.